Huh. All right, guys, Eijiro Kirishima video. You know what this means. I need to go file my teeth down to a point like a great white shark searching for prey. And then I need to go dye my hair red. This is the only way this can be done. Are you guys ready? I hope you are. Here we go. Okay, no, no, no. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I'm, um... I'm at kind of odds doing this video because, you know, Kirishima is a very manly kind of guy. Just take a look at his bedroom. I mean, if this doesn't scream manly, I don't know what does. He has a punching bag and flames in the background. In fact, when I was uh, shopping earlier for this video, I really, really wanted to find like a, um, like a tank top or something that had like flames on it. I'd be like, oh my god, that would have been perfect. But unfortunately, Goodwill didn't provide. But still, I think this is something that Kirishima would wear, you know, athletic wear. He's a very athletic kind of guy. Um, so yeah, uh, Kirishima, student number eight of class 1A. He has the quirk hardening, which allows him to just harden his skin to the point where it's basically like rock. Um, you know, I, I have a sharpening stone here and... Okay, I'm gonna stop doing that now, but okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, I'll be honest with you. Kirishima starting out the series, and for the first few arcs, ah, uh, kind of bland for me. Didn't really pay a lot of attention to him, you know, um... I think it was just because, you know, yeah, his appearance was pretty cool. The spiky red hair and the jagged teeth and everything. But come on, guys, by anime standards, that's not really all that unique. And uh, his quirk to me was pretty average as well. Uh, kind of bordering on boring, I, I will admit. I'm like, oh, okay, he's a kid with spiky hair. He's really boastful. You know, he's very open. Kind of uh, interesting that we're doing him right off of Uraraka. Because Uraraka was another character that really just kind of wore her her emotions on a sleeve and just, you know, whatever she was feeling, she let everybody know. Kirishima's like that as well, except he tends to shout it to the heavens more often than not. But, um, yeah, overall, throughout uh, the USJ arc, the Sports Fest, uh, didn't really feel much for Kirishima. In fact, I don't know if a lot of other people did either. Um, it wasn't until one of the most recent story arcs of My Hero Academia, the Chisake arc, when I think we really started feeling Red Riot. Um, I, in fact, I remember reading that chapter where he revealed his, his unbreakable form. Red Riot Unbreakable! And it was at that moment where I literally, I did one of these. I don't know if anybody's ever done this while reading manga. This might just be a personal quirk. I'm a nerd, so just keep that in mind. But I'm sitting here on my computer, you know, scrolling through, reading the chapter. We get to the end of that chapter where he reveals this. And I'm just like... This is awesome. I do the snap at the screen. I'm like, yep, yep, yep. Okay, I'm on board with this kid. Um, and he's gained in popularity throughout the uh, series as well. In the very first popularity poll, Kirishima ranked 15th. I think in the last two, he ranked in like the top 10. And actually, I think he might have ranked in like he was the fourth or fifth place in the very most recent one. I think. I'm pretty sure he did. So yeah, he's gaining in popularity. And I think the Chisake arc really helped to, to bolster that there. Keep in mind, I, I, I really think think Horikoshi wants to go and expand upon every single student in class 1A. He wants to show us what they're all capable of, that they're all awesome, that they all have capabilities of being great heroes, but at the same time, he doesn't want to rush it, okay? Horikoshi seems like he's a good author. He knows what he's doing, okay? I think it would be kind of cheap if it was just like, all right, in this story arc, it's gonna we're going to show everything Kirishima is badass, and then immediately after that, we're going to show Sato being badass. Badass. And then immediately after that, we're going to show Koda being badass. I, I think he wants to make this natural. He wants to make it seem like, all right, I'm not just throwing it at you, you know, scene after scene after scene. We're going to do this, but we're going to do it naturally. Okay, so I know there's still a few students in Class 1A that really haven't had time to shine yet, um, but they are going to get their moments. It's just that he's not going to do it. He's not going to shoehorn it in unless it really feels that way. And with that arc with Chisake and everything, um, I think that was a brilliant uh, way to include Kirishima there in the, the Fat Gum offices, so to speak. Uh, and Fat Gum was great as well. We're, we're going to have to talk about him at some point in his own video. We're going to bring him up here because we kind of have 
have to. Um, but yeah, Kirishima, and then teaming him up with Amajiki, uh, Sun Eater, one of the big three at uh, UA, because Amajiki is this very kind of like, I, I don't even know if emo is the proper term. Like, he really does just seem straight up like super lethargic and depressed most of the time where he's just like... Why are we even here right now? You know, but teaming Kirishima up with that guy and then with Fat Gum, that was that was a really good um uh dichotomy that that Horikoshi set up between those three. Okay, so uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's uh you know what? Let's just start off by his quirk. Because his quirk not only kind of reflects his personality, but his quirk in general is just really easy to explain, especially coming off of Uraraka. And uh I made a lot of gravity faux pas in the last video. I think I mentioned like there is no gravity in space. What I meant is for a human, you know, it's pretty much zero G's because you're floating. But yes, gravity does in fact exist in space. Um, but anyway, yeah, Kirishima's quirk compared to Uraraka's and a few other ones, pretty simple to explain. It's called hardening. And uh, what it does is, I guess the best way to describe it is it alters the, uh, the molecular makeup of his skin to make it hard as rock. In fact, I would just come out and say... It just turns his skin into rock. It's never been expressly stated that that's what his quirk is. But from what we've seen him do with it, um, yeah, it turns his skin into rock. And also, he's uh, able to change the general shape of it. N not to the point where he can, like, grow extra appendages and stuff, but he can add, like, rigid spikes and things to his body. Like, when he's um, hardening up his uh, hand, for instance, he doesn't just make his fingertips, like, hard as rock, but they still retain the shape. They add a pointed edge to them so he can kind of maybe alter the general shape of things like his fingers are obviously a little bit thinner than the rest of his arms so when they get hardened it's like shing he adds like a spike at the end of it so it's a stabbing and scratching you know a uh, kind of ability there so it's a definitely a close range quirk um that's one of the major downsides of it is in close combat it's amazing and it's really hard to take him down uh even with things like guns um because even if he gets you know shot point blank that's something that his core can actually resist um now there is a limit there is a breaking point it's not like he can resist like um if if there was like something ridiculously have like a plane crashing on him or something i don't think he'd be able to tank that so much um but so far from what we've seen he seems rather resistant uh if a metal beam or if a building were to collapse on him maybe not like a giant skyscraper but if he was in a building and like one story fell on him he could harden his skin up and he could yeah he can resist that um even when fighting against characters like Bakugo, who use explosions, he was able to resist that. Because you'd figure in that situation, when Bakugo's launching explosions and stuff, even if he could, like, you know, resist it with his skin being hard as rock, you know, it would still, like, leave a shockwave. But he seemed to be able to resist them fairly well there. Uh, but, yeah, there is an upper limit. And the more that he pushes, the harder and harder that he makes himself... <laughs> He makes his skin. Um, it doesn't last for quite as long, and uh, if he starts taking successive damage, the hardening begins to gradually weaken. So let's say Kirishima is up against a villain that has a giant hammer. Let's say the person, let's say the villain he's going up against has a very basic, like, strength augmenting quirk, kind of like a uh, muscular. So Kirishima is like, the bank is being attacked. I'm like, oh my god, why do we have 35 banks in this city, and why are they all being attacked at once? once but okay fine red riot is on the case so kirishima goes down there he sees a villain with a huge you know muscular kind of quirk having a giant hammer he's swinging it around kirishima hardens his up and he's like bring it on the villain's like Ugh! boom one hit? Okay. He's like, huh, got another one in you. Yeah, boom! All right, I can keep... Boom! All right, this is starting to... Okay, this is really starting to... It'll gradually weaken over time the more successive damage he retains. So, with that being said, yeah, it's really cool. He can go super unbreakable, and in that first... You know, he's basically invincible for the first few hits. But if that fight wears on, and especially if there's, like, a bunch of villains all surrounding him at once, and they all have like Tommy guns or something. I just watched Big Trouble.
trouble in Little China last night. So, like, imagine a scene like that, like the shootout at the beginning, you know? It's just like, all right, I got this. And then, yeah, he might be able to tank a few bullets, but, you know, if this keeps on going, he's going to eventually gradually get weaker, and then the, the hardening is going to become undone to the point where he can be hurt again. But, hey, while he is in this form, uh, blunt attacks, stabbing attacks, you know, projectiles, like bullets, arrows... All that kind of crap is really not all that uh, effective on him. And while he's in his, un his unbreakable form, it takes it to the next level. Number one, making him look absolutely badass and demonic. <laughs> but also, um, it seems to harden even his eyes. So that that makes me feel kind of like, like, imagine your eyes, your squishy eyes, being like as hard as like a rock or a stone. It just... It seems odd. Um, I mean, of course, like with most people, his body is adapted to an extent to deal with his quirk. Uh, if he overexerts himself, he's going to have repercussions for that. But overall, yeah, he can. his eyes can get hard too. So if you think that's a weak point, like, oh, just go after his eyes. Now, as for his innards, I don't really know about that. Uh, it seems to be more or less just his outer, you know, his epidermis, his skin, his eyes, even his hair. His hair can get super spiky, too, to the point where you get hit with that thing. You're probably going to get impaled. Um, yeah, so while he's in unbreakable form, he's unbreakable, too, to in a certain extent. That was really pushed to the limit during the Chisake arc when they were fighting against those two members of uh, the Eight Precepts. I forget their names exactly, but there was the one dude that had the unbreakable spear, super, you know, powerful strength, you know, quirk. And then there was the other dude that was the barrier guy, the ultimate defense, uh, when him and Fat Gum were fighting against that guy unbreakable did eventually begin to get worn down and he was bleeding pretty bad there but um yeah you know that's uh that's his quirk and it kind of reflects his personality to the point where yeah he might well in a sense it's like um the best way for me to put this is that kirishima is a very manly kind of guy you know, he loves to work out and all that stuff, so it's just like, oh, yeah, so we can make his body super hard. But also, he has a, a very chivalrous kind of uh, personality, and he expresses that openly, and so he has good sportsmanship and all that stuff. Uh, that's a perfect example of when he was fighting Tetsu, 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 Tetsu during the sports uh, sports fest. And sorry, I just got to say his name again because I love saying it. Tetsu, 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 Tetsu! Please tell me his middle name is also Tetsu Tetsu, because then it would be Tetsu 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 Tetsu. Yeah, okay. His parents knew what he was, they, what they were doing there. Um, but yeah, so they both had quirks that were very similar. In fact, I think, though, Kirishima is, is superior to Tetsu Tetsu's. Now, at first glance, Tetsu Tetsu... I'm sorry, it's, it's his actual name. I know this is getting kind of confusing, but I could just call him... Uh, double T, T squared, Mr. T squared, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, um, Tetsu Tetsu's ability is steel, which allows his, you know, turns his entire body into steel, the same way that Kirishima can do it with rock. Now, you might think, well, steel is stronger than rock. Well, okay, I guess it depends on what kind of rock, but you, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, it shouldn't Tetsu Tetsu win there? The downside from Tetsu Tetsu's quirk is it's stated that he needs to consume a certain amount of iron in order to make his quirk actually function uh, properly. Now, whether or not that means, like, he needs to eat, like, a lot of iron, like, oh, I need to take my vitamins, get a lot of iron, eat a lot of greens, get some iron in my blood, or if it means, like, actually go the Gajio, you know, Red Fox route with it in Fairy Tale, and actually, like, I need to consume the actual metal of iron in order to, you know, increase my quirk. It doesn't really matter, but what the basic premise is that Tetsu Tetsu, uh, he has to consume something in order to actually make his quirk full-powered. Kirishima does not have that weakness, and I think that's how he was able to really overcome Tetsu Tetsu. They had their first fight at the sports fest. It was just an all-out brawl, and it was a fight that lasted for quite some time because their quirks were both basically armoring themselves up, so it was just a test of endurance and who had the stronger quirk and who could hold out for longer and they were just beating the ever-loving crap out of each other just like boom oh that's all you could do i thought you were supposed to be tough boom ah that was a freaking bee sting i barely felt that boom uppercut so it was an extremely manly fight almost as manly as this tire foam I was looking for stuff to buy today at a dollar store, and I'm just like, okay, tire foam, that's manly. Uh, beef jerky, that's certainly manly. Um, spicy Doritos. Army men, the army is manly. 
except for you know the women that are serving very proudly in the armed forces as well but army uh they both go down it's a draw actually they both uh you know pass out but they have sort of like a, a tiebreaker sort of deal where at the end of the fights uh tetsu tetsu and kirishima they arm wrestle with each other and that's at the point where kirishima managed to crack and break tetsu tetsu's steel armor and then he just boom and then kirishima wins and i think the reason for that was because kirishima doesn't need to consume stuff in order to make him his skin harder uh, tetsu tetsu did and he already exerted himself during their first fight so by the time they were doing the arm wrestling match uh his iron deficiency it was getting low to the point where he couldn't maintain the shell anymore and that's what that what that's what caused it to break there but yeah um I thought it was a pretty boring quirk at first, but then this happened. And hey, if you were a fan of Kirishima beforehand, you're like, oh man, I didn't even need to see the demon form in order for me to love Kirishima. I loved him from day one. It's like, that's great for you, but I just needed that one little push, okay? Even if Kirishima isn't your favorite character or anything like that, still, you got to admit, this right here, this is some serious shonen badassery going on. Horikoshi knows the score, you know? what I mean. And it's kind of interesting just going over everything that he can do with his hardening quirk, like his teeth and his hair and every aspect of his body. And yet whenever Kirishima does end up in a fight, it's always hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's always hand-to-hand -hand punches, kicks. That's what he does. He, you know, he could. I mean, if he wanted to, his teeth are already super sharp. They're, uh, that, that was how he was born. They were just like at that way at birth. But, um, when he hardens them up, they get even tougher. He can run up to somebody and just be like, ah, you know, chomp, or he can, you know, use his hair and like grab somebody and just like you know but um he doesn't do that and i'm telling you the reason he doesn't do that is because that's not really all that honorable you know we've seen the chivalry so kind of like honor there like kind of taking a lot of virtues from the knights of, of old there he's like yeah i could go up to somebody and fight a villain with my teeth i mean i could do some pretty big damage there but that's not really a manly way of fighting that's not my way of fighting the hair thing, though, you could do something with that, considering also that his hero that he looks up to, I mean, All Might probably for one, I think all of the aspiring young heroes in UA and all over the country really look up to All Might. He's the symbol of peace, for God's sake. But no, the main um, aspiration, the, the, the inspiration for him to be a hero, that's actually Crimson Riots. Okay, and we don't, we know very little about that dude other than how he looks, and his quirk is actually armament hockey, which allows him, oh, that's what it is! Look at him! He's hardening up his hair to a point. It's going black like vulcanization. Crimson Riot has armament hockey. No, it's, it's some quirk that allows him to harden his hair to a point. So, he has this, like, really sharp, you know, haircut, and he can just shing, and then he's like... Mine is the drill that will pierce the heavens! Giga Drill Breaker! You know, so that's that's what he does. And so, uh, Kirishima always looked up to Crimson Riot, and that's the reason he has his hero name right now as Red Riot. Um, this is a good as point to any to, to bring up as sort of a side note here. How exactly does the uh, copyright work on hero names? Because the way that, like, Midnight talked about it when they were deciding on their hero names, you know, like, I think Eden chose Ingenium. It's like, uh, Ingenium is already taken, Ida, by your older brother. And then Kirishima's like, I want to be Red Riot. And I'm like, that might be a little bit too close to Crimson Riot. You might have a lawsuit there. But no, Midnight was like, yes, that's great. Awesome. I'm just curious because it's like, how many people out there becoming heroes would want names similar to All Might? Like, let's say there's this really tall superhero and he's like, you know what? I want my hero name to be Tall Might, you know? Or what if there's a guy who has a quirk that summons holes? Like he can summon a hole to throw villains into. I am Fall Might. Or maybe he has a quirk that, oh, that that works with, like, autumn trees. You know, I'm Fall Might in another context. I'm just saying, there's a lot of people that might be ripping off other hero names. I'm like, is there a department for this? Like, oh, you, you're you registering as Red Riot? No, we have, to, we have to talk to our lawyers. That's way too close to intellectual property. You have to change something else. You know what I mean? Like, Ida is probably going to be fine because his older brother is in Genium. And I personally feel, I'll get into this when we get to Ida's video. Hopefully it's the next one. Um that when Ida does become a full-fledged hero, his hero name is actually going to be Ingenium uh, Mark II, like in Ingenium Mach II or something, because that's that that would fit. Wouldn't that fit as a hero name for him? But uh, yeah, so Kirishima looked up to this guy, Crimson Riot. 
Now, uh, I'm going to be getting into the backstory here that I kind of left out with Ashido's, all right? So, Kirishima and Ashido went to the same uh, junior high or middle school, okay? The way it works in Japan is you got three years of junior high and then three years of high school. Uh, in America, it's pretty much the same, except you got three years of middle school and then three, uh, four years of high school, so a little bit different. But uh, while he was a senior in junior high, so in his third year, uh, when he was, you know, uh, thinking about enlisting at UA, or anything um he spotted a bunch of bullies picking on this kid uh, apparently this kid had a tanuki quirk and he could change objects into something else and these bullies were giving him trouble like oh change these leaves into money so we can go and buy some booze or whatever and the tanuki kids like i can't do that mister that would be a great you know d disapproval of my ability you know and then the bullies start to rough him up kirishima shows up you know kind of like hey you beating up this little kid? He's like, oh, that's Kirishima. He's a senior. That's okay. One bully picks up, like, I think it's a rock and just throws it right in Kirishima's face. That's the one thing about the My Hero Academia universe. Um, bullying still exists, and because of quirks, it gets taken to a whole new level. We go beyond just shoving people in the hallway or getting tripped. Oh, man, that happened to me. Oh, that, this brought back so many memories. How many kids out there were you in high school, you got bullied constantly, and people just, like, tripped you in the hallway? That happened to me all the damn time. To the point, though, where I was able to develop an immunity to it. Yeah, it happened to me. I got tripped so many times. I fell flat on my face so many times. I developed, like, a technique that, you know, when someone, like, puts their foot out trying to trip me, I can, like, you know, like, like glide over it or, like, hop over it. Like, I, it was like a, like a freaking muscular reflex at that point. I'm like, I knew exactly, like, ha-ha! Untrippable! So, uh, that's my quirk. I don't know about you, but, yeah, it gets taken to the next level in my hero academia. K kids are, like, uh, you know, Bakugo, like, you know, explosions, and, like, I can fly. So I'm gonna pick you up and drop you or I'm just gonna throw a rock in your face, you know um, So Kirishima, this is something that's really cool uh, Showing the development of his quirk. Okay over the years because keep in mind. This is only one year before he um, Was part of UA so one year before the start of the series Okay, and at the start of the series when he's in UA he can already harden his quirk to the point of doing like the spikes and everything and only a year previously it was stated all he could really do with it is harden his skin just a little bit to the point where when that kid picked up a rock and threw it right in Kirishima's face it hurt him he hardened but it still hurt him that kind of thing would do nothing to Kirishima right now um, not even going into the unbreakable form like Kirishima just the way he is right now you could throw a rock or a cement block right in his face and it would just be like Bah! He would just break through that shit, you know, like a freaking like a like a, a Tibetan monk or something that's been like training their bodies, you know, hardening it as steel for like the last forty years. Kirishima would just be like, ah. <laughs> so yeah, that just shows though how much he trained. Why did he train though? What was the impetus for that? Well, in a sense, it was actually Ashido. So Ashido, after the kids, you know, beat up Kirishima and they walked away, Ashido approached them, used her very outgoing, expressive personality to break dance the bullies down. Like, seriously, they just, like, started talking to him and then she broke out into a dance number and then the other bullies were like, yeah, let's do, 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 do. And then everybody walked away being friends. So... <laughs> Okay, and so uh, later on, later on down the line, uh, Kirishima was walking to middle school one morning, and some girls from his class were also walking, and this giant villain dude, I don't even know if it was a villain, just this giant hulking guy approached these schoolgirls, and he was like, you know, where do I find this hero office? And he's really intimidating, and the girls didn't answer, and so he, like, you know, slammed his fist right against the wall and he's like why won't you answer me and everybody's looking at this and they're like oh crap where are the heroes these teenage girls are about to get freaking like stomped on by this dude like heroes and kirishima's watching it and he he had a moment where he's like imagine this okay most kids in the my hero academia universe want to be heroes okay because that's just superheroes are real i mean why wouldn't you want to be a hero okay so I imagine a lot of them are th sitting around thinking about what it would be like to be a hero and saving people and using their quirks for justice. But when the heat actually gets turned on, all right, and there's a villain attack right in front of you, like, holy crap. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm not getting I'm not getting beat up and sent to the emergency room today. Uh, heroes! <laughs> is there a hero here? Uh, and Kirishima had a moment like that where he froze up, and that's expected. The dude's like 15, 14 years old in this scene, so he freezes up. He's like, oh man, what do I do? What do I do? And then luckily Ashido arrived, and she just jumped in front of the other schoolgirls, and, and she was like, yeah, the office is right down there to the left. Make two right turns, and you're there. And the guy is just like, Okay, thank you. And then he just walks away. And Ashido, don't think that Ashido's like, oh, she's so brave in that situation. No, she broke down crying after that, which I can imagine a lot of people would in that situation. Like, you just, like, swallow up your fear, and you're just like, oh, it's that direction, please go. And then it's like, go. And then after the tension, he's like, oh, my God, I was so scary. I almost died. So, you know, it's understandable. It's understandable. Uh, you, you never know when in a situation you're going to get in and how you're going to react. And that's in those ways, you know, like, uh, let, let me tell you a little story about me. Okay. Um, so I work in retail. I've worked in retail for almost seven years now. And, you know, some days I'm at work and it's pretty boring. And maybe if you work in retail, you do this too. But have you ever sat around and just thought about what it would be like if someone were to like break into the store and try to rob you? You know, just like, what would you do in that situation? Well, of course, I picture myself as a karate badass. Like someone comes up to me, he's like, pulls out a knife, like, give me all the money. I do some weird freaking like <laughs> Baki the grappler shit out of nowhere like I've never taken any lessons in martial arts but all of a sudden in this situation I'm a freaking Bruce Lee badass so I grab him and get the knife out of him and put him in a headlock and I'm like haha I saved the day right so um and then thankfully this did not actually happen in the store I work at uh this actually happened in a tiny little convenience store that we have just in my town like my tiny little village convenience store um, I was uh, off work, I was driving home, and my mom wanted me to get something, and so I was like, okay, I'll stop at the convenience store and I'll get it. I go in, start shopping, and then all of a sudden this drunk idiot walks into the convenience store clutching this 2 by 4 just this piece of wood, and he's clutching it so tightly he's bleeding all over his uh, blood all over his arm from holding this thing. This, it's like 4 in the afternoon, this guy's drunk out of his mind. Um, he was um, mad at some kid that rode his dirt bike through his yard, and the, and the kid was in the store, too. So he comes in after this kid. He's like, you stay out of my freaking yard. I'll beat your head in. And he's waving this freaking wooden thing around, and the cashier's like, get the hell out of here. I'm calling the cops. And she did, and we had to stick around and talk to him. And uh, in that situation, you know what I did? I hid behind the ATM the entire time. Because in that situation, I'm sitting there looking at it, and I'm thinking, like, can I do anything here? Because this dude is, like, six foot four, waving a giant block of wood around, obviously drunk out of his mind. Yeah, I'm not getting conked in the head and going to the ICU tonight. This isn't happening. I'm just going to stay back, you know? So, um, yeah, you, you never know what situation, like, how you're going to react. So Kirishima froze up. Ashido just went into the fray. She didn't know what was going to happen, so she started crying. And uh, Kirishima, at this point, was very dejected by his actions. He was like, I can't believe, if I want to be a hero, I can't act like that. I froze up. What happens if people are in serious danger? I, I can't do this. So for a moment there, he's like, I I'm not cut out for UA. I'm not cut out to be a hero. I can't do this. Um, it was at that point, though, he, he knocked over something in his room. And uh, remember, in the My Hero Academia universe, they have, like, holograms. So it's like a holographic disc opened up. And then it's, uh, like, a documentary on Crimson Riot. And he's, like, listening to him in his room. And Crimson Riot's like, you know, do you think heroes don't feel fear? That's ridiculous. Of course we feel fear. You know, so it really kind of changed Kirishima's perspective. Like, being a hero is not about having zero fear in situations. Rather, being a hero is more about dealing with that fear and, and using the courage that you have, say, inspirational stone, courage enough to protect those that are, you know, feeling way more fear. Because you got to figure, like, being a hero is like a status symbol in the world. Like, you are taking on that mantle that you will be a defender of the weak and the downtrodden. So, if you roll up to a bunch of people that are taken hostages by a villain, 
yeah, you're going to be feeling fear along like, you know, fear for the hostages, fear for getting hurt, fear for other people getting hurt. But you got to imagine the people there, they're in way more fear than you. And you got to be like, you know what, I can I can make this situation better. That's what it means to be a hero. And that kind of gave Kirishima some words of wisdom. So he, for the next year, up until he got into the entrance exam for UA, kind of did the same thing that Izuku did. Izuku, for that entire year leading up to it, All Might was training him, you know, with the, you know, the trash yard and everything, moving the garbage and training up his roaring muscles, young Midoriya. So he's training up and doing everything great. And at the same time, uh, Kirishima's doing it too. Now, yes, Kirishima did already have a quirk, but it wasn't something that was really battle-ready quite yet. He could harden his skin a little bit, but probably not too much. So he really just went pumped, you know, balls to the wall with it, you know, just like lifting weights, you know, push-ups and everything. And then there's one scene where he's just literally taking like, I think a piece of wood or cement and just slamming it into his face. It's like, gotta get harder, gotta get better, gotta get stronger. I'm a hero. Oh, you know, just keep slamming things against his face. And hey, that's how, that's how quirks improve. You know, it was stated like that in the training camp arc. You know, you just got to keep, you know, I think in the training camp, it was uh, him teamed up with Ojiro and just like, you know, Ojiro whacking his tail up against Kirishima so he gains more endurance and eventually that's how he got to Red Riot Unbreakable you know that's that's how it works there as for some other moves he has uh, pretty basic stuff he has Red uh, Counter where he get like he gets hurt on purpose and he gets hit and then he you know counters back and I think he has like Red Punch or something it's just a straight punch so not really any sort of like clever kind of attacks or whatever I would be curious if he can actually like you know, summon spikes up on his, like, wrist or something, like, I can make spikes on my arm, and then I could just, BAM, you know, something like that, uh, but yeah, I mean, he's already pretty rigid and pretty hard when he goes into that form, so I think getting hit by him or just getting, like, you know, uh, he, like, does a tackle attack into you, it, it's gonna do some damage, oh, he could poke out his, uh, his, uh, elbow, just, like, you know, red spike and just, oh, uh, right into you, that, that would hurt pretty bad, um, most certainly. So yeah, after the whole uh, training regiment was done, he decided to go and uh, take the entrance exam at UA. I actually think this is him in the chapter three, you know, with uh, them fighting against the robots, but he has his old hairstyle and he's kind of off to the left. I don't know if that's him, but it might be him. Um, and then he joins UA. And when he does, when they're actually heading to the first day of class, he um, reveals to Ashido, I changed my hair. And his hair was like spiky, like the way it is now. And um, Ashido is in the background, you know, like, oh, we're horn buddies now. And I think that's part of the reason. I think one of the reasons was because uh, Kirishima wanted to be more like Crimson Riot, his hero. But also, he took a lot of um, inspiration from Ashido and her actions as well. So I think that's why he just, he chose to stylize his hair the way he did. You know, like like big and spiky, so he has like horns or the spike that Crimson Riot had. So that's that. Also, another distinguishing feature about himself is he has a scar over his... Ah, oh, man, I forgot to draw it. <laughs> man, who forgets to draw a scar, right? Um, as, so he has like this little tiny scar above his eye. Um, it happened when his quirk first manifested when he was a little kid. His uh, skin got really hard and he went to go rub his eye and it, you know, just cut off a little. Like imagine, imagine scraping this sharpening stone right up against your face. Probably something similar there. Um, I brought that up because uh, Horikoshi actually forgets to draw it sometimes. I think in the anime, it's fairly consistent, but in the manga, depending on the scene, it's like, yeah. That's the thing when you put scars on characters. If you make it like a really obvious scar, like if Kirishima was walking around with something like this all of a sudden, you know, that wouldn't be, you know, you would remember to draw it because it's so obvious. But something like really tiny, like a scar like that, it kind of goes um, over their heads sometimes. Also, it was stated... Um, that whenever he um, hardens up his fists and then slams them together, it makes a really neat noise. And um, I, I, I thought that, you know, I heard something that might be similar to that. So uh, this is what I believe it's like whenever uh, whenever uh, Kirishima slams his fists together. It's kind of probably produces a sound like this. Yeah, so let's, let's go with that. Um, snake eggs. They're magnetic. Yeah, okay. Well... Uh, where do we go from here? Uh, let's talk about shipping! 
<laughs> this is this is great. Um, you know, I, I love it when I do research for characters and stuff, and obviously I'm not way into every single character in, in My Hero Academia, so there's some that I knew about beforehand. Like, when I did the Uraraka video, I, for the most part, like, didn't discover anything revolutionary when I was researching Uraraka. I, you know, learned about pretty much everything. Like, even the Bakugo Uraraka things, like, I, I already knew about that. Something I did not know about. I just, I seriously had no idea this was a thing. But, uh, yeah, Kirishima's really big in the, uh, the Yaoi community, especially with Bakugo. Um, a lot of shipping pairs him up with him. Um, I think it's adorable, <laughs> personally. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't know that, so I'm like, huh, Kirishima, really? Okay, well, you know, go at it. My favorite was, um... I saw a, uh, I did my research on this. My favorite was I saw, like, a thing on, uh, Google, like, I was looking for images, and he's like, here's the reason why Kirishima is the most adorable cinnamon bun in anime, and I'm like, oh, that's great. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, yeah, most people seem to have paired up uh, Bakugo with, with Kirishima. Th there's a wiki page for this. You could go read it if you're prevy to it. And, you know, I, I personally love this stuff. You know, I always treat fan shipping and all this stuff as, like, part of the whole experience of enjoying anime. Okay? Because it means that, like, the fandom is alive and it's thriving whenever they do all this stuff, you know? So, hey, if it's not for you, if you just, like, you know what? I'm not into the whole fan shipping thing i'm not into that crap i just want to read the actual story and watch the mo i mean watch the anime and not really get involved in anything that's fine too it's just the way that i've always done this is i always pay attention to what people are saying in the fandoms and what is popular and what isn't popular what characters are being shipped with each other i i just personally enjoy that stuff and the fact that the whole kirishima bakugo thing flew over my head really did surprise me i'm like Huh, really? Okay, we can do some research on this. So, you know, that's a thing that exists, and I think they look great together. But to round out this discussion about his personality and everything, uh, it was stated by Horikoshi that he created Kirishima as a character to really, to bring the class of uh, 1A together. Um, and I think he really does do that. Um, he's like he's the kind of guy that's just like, hey guys, what's up? Let's go do this. Let's hang out. That's the kind of guy Kirishima is. Um, doesn't really seem to not have, uh, like, it's like he made friends with Bakugo. Like, even if you're not a fan of the shipping part of it, like, him and Bakugo seem to be, like, best friends, or as the closest you could be with best friends with Bakugo, you know? So, uh, he managed that. Not not an easy thing to do. But, uh, you also have, you know, he hangs out with Saro and, and Kaminari, and just everybody in the class seems to really be cool with Kirishima, and, uh, like, if, like, if, if they were gonna organize a class trip, um, it would be, like, probably, like, Kirishima and Ashido and, like, Hagakure, would be the characters to like you know let's let's uh, design let, let's figure out where we're going and plan everything like that those would be the characters to do it probably um yeah I Ida as well being the class rep and all that stuff but yeah very outgoing kind of uh kind of guy very likable so uh yeah let's talk about uh the moments in the series so uh yeah not really a lot of stuff to talk about up until the Chisake arc probably the biggest moment was um there was the moment during the USJ, but that was more about just, you know, introducing us to his character. Uh, he was teamed up with Bakugo in that kind of, like, destroyed city zone, and they were beating on some villains there. And Kirishima's just kind of like, you know, he, he's very, like, much trying to, like, hey, uh, want to be friends, Bakugo? And Bakugo's just like, just shut up and fight! So that, that kind of started the beginning of their relationship. Um, and then, though, not really much after that. Uh, the Sports Fest, okay, you had him on Team Bakugo go and then eventually the fight with him and Tetsu. Tetsu, which I went already over, kind of introduces us to his personality, his his manliness, his chivalry and all that stuff. I, I love the scene where he uh, wins the arm wrestling match and then he extends out. Like they're all like his eyes are all like white at out and everything and he looks really demonic and he like reaches out a hand to Tetsu Tetsu like, good job, man. You done good. And then Tetsu's like, yes, I know I did. And they shake hands, and then Midnight's in the background, like, oh, so chivalrous, young men. And then Cementos is there, like, mm-hmm, okay, that's nice. Can, can we move on to the next round? Um, 
So that was a really cool scene. Kind of introduced us to that whole thing there with his personality. Uh, then he fought against Bakugo. You know, held out for a little while. But, you know, Bakugo eventually has, like, the firepower. And it just didn't last. But he got taken out that way. Uh, made it a little further than I figured. But, okay, cool. Um, and then, uh, after that, um, during the stand... Oh, okay, that's something I could talk about. Him and Tetsu Tetsu actually got enlisted to do the um, internships. Or, no, no, I think the, the work studies. Yeah with uh, Fourth Kind, who is a hero that has, like, four arms. So he's Machamp, basically. And he enlisted both of them because of their attitudes during the sports fest. A lot of heroes actually kind of liked both of them. They were like, oh, man, those two are just, like, you know what? They're very true blue. You know, they're just two guys, and they, they have their quirks, and they're just going at it 120%. They're bringing the fire. They're very passionate about all this. It'd be pretty cool to have a sidekick like that. Like, a lot of the heroes were talking about him. So uh, him and Tetsu Tetsu get enlisted with four kinds. That was cool. Doesn't do much, though. Doesn't, like, participate in the fight with Stain or anything. During the training camp, he trained with Ojiro to strengthen his quirk. But I think he was part of the group that um, stayed in the lodge while the villains attack there. Um, he went to go and uh, try to get back Bakugo. And he was actually a very central figure to that. Because when they were figuring out exactly how to, like, you know, jump over the uh, battlefield and then grab Bakugo, Izuku looks at uh, Kirishima and he tells him directly he's like Kirishima you have to be the one to reach out to Bakugo now I'm starting to see where a lot of this uh, fan shipping came from but it's like no he he's the one that like out of all of us you're his friend all right, you're, you know, the relationship between Izuku and Bakugo is a little shaky and everything, and Ida and Momo, it, and not, not too much really, and, and Todoroki, not so much, but him and Kirishima, they hang out, you can clearly tell, like, sometimes you can see him, like, walking to school back and forth, so it's like, they clearly hang out, maybe, um, and I imagine how that would go, he's like, hey, Bakugo, want to come over and play some video games? I'm off today. Bakugo's like, shut up, bastard! Yeah, I'll be there in an hour. <laughs> He's like, can you imagine playing? Can you imagine playing like PlayStation with Bakugo? Be there like playing Tekken or some Mortal Kombat or something, and every time you beat him, he would just blow up the controller. Um, but yeah, so Kirishima is the one. They they jump over the thing. They use uh, Todoroki's ice, and they whoo, over the battlefield. And Kirishima reaches out to him, and Bakugo is like, ah, you damn guys. You know, what the hell do you think you're doing? But he's like a smile on his face. Like, you saved me. Good job. So um, that, that was a really emotional scene there. Um, if nothing, really just kind of cemented like, okay, they're they're friends. You know, up until this point, it's kind of debatable because it's like Bakugo tends to push everybody away. But it's like, no, you can clearly tell they trust each other. They're, they're good friends there. That's good. That's good to know. Um, so after that, we have the Chisake arc. Well, no, we have the provisional license exam, but I don't, I don't really think he did all that much there. I think that, I think he had a costume upgrade a little bit there. Kirishima's costume is pretty cool. Uh, there's really not much to it. It's just like these, um, like, you know, shoulder pads that sort of look like gears that he has on, and he has the R on his buckler, you know, but because most of his quirk involves hardening his flesh, he keeps most of his skin exposed, so it's like, you know, it looks cool, but really all he needs is a pair of pants, you know, and a mask, you know, because he's a hero, but other than that, anything else would just get destroyed, because if he put on, like, an actual, like, a skin-tight suit or something, when he goes in Unbreakable, it would just get shredded, so, I mean, I guess you could make an outfit that resists that, and just contours to it, but... Why bother just to have him go shirtless and just, you know, get all shredded Hulk out and just, you know, punch somebody really hard. That's all you need, really. Uh, but yeah, provisional license exam. He gets it, uh, becomes a semi-pro hero. And then we get to the Chisake arc, okay? So they're battling against those two members of the eight precepts below the compound. Uh, you got Fat Gum with them, and he's getting beaten down. Um, what happens is Kirishima gets defeated, and I think there's a moment there where he gets a little bit... He, he was overestimating his own abilities a little bit. I think it's really because... Like, you get to a certain point where it's like, oh man, I'm leveling up, I'm leveling up. I've gone, I've gotten so far from where I was at the beginning, but you don't really see how much you have left. Alright, to put it in a, uh, another context, imagine you're playing an RPG, and your character starts off at level 1, and the level cap is 100. I actually don't know a lot of RPGs that set the cap off at exactly 100. Well, Pokemon does that. So let's just use Pokemon, for example. Okay, you're playing Pokemon. You get your Pokemon at level 1 or level 5 or whatever. You're training them up. You get up to, let's say, level 40. 
and you're thinking, oh man, I'm level 40. Look how far I came. I have all these abilities. I'm so badass. I'm really cool. But then you meet another trainer who has level 80 Pokemon and just destroys you. So I think that's kind of what happened with Kirishima. He's a Pokemon. But no, Kirishima, he's like, I'm getting stronger. I hardened my quirk. I got into UA. I have Red Riot unbreakable form. I am unbreakable. I can do this. And then he got beaten down by the eight precepts and he's there bleeding and he's like oh crap i'm not as indestructible as i thought i was now that's not a bad thing because that just serves to like reignite the fire after he got out of that like i need to train even harder and get even harder and stronger than before harder and stronger than before but at that moment he got beaten down he's like oh crap i'm not as unbreakable as i thought so then fat gum shields him Except this dude's, and I, I can't remember this dude's name. I can't remember any of the eight precepts, really, except for the one dude that had the time. Kronos, I think his name was. Aside from him, I can't remember. But uh, anyway, this one dude, he has the unbreakable spear kind of thing, and he's just pummeling the crap out of Fat Gum. And Fat Gum's whole thing, he's a big chubby dude who's a mascot for Takoyaki, but more importantly than his commercial success is that he has a fat absorption quirk, kind of like a Nomu. So he's just, like, taking these hits, and it's, it's hurting him. He's like, oh, man, I have an absorption quirk, and this is, you know, hurting the crap out of me. So he's getting hit by all these, trying to protect Kirishima. This is when Kirishima's lying on the ground bleeding, and he's remembering the, the, the flashback with Ashido and, like, him, you know, becoming a you know student at UA and what drove him and everything. And here he is watching Fakum do all this stuff. So he kind of gets up and does like one final attack even though he's really hurt and his hardening is already pressed to the limit and he's almost ready to pass out he's like Rah! you know and he does one more attack and that um buys time enough for fat gum to activate the secondary effect of his quirk it's not just a fat absorption he also takes in all that energy from the blows he sustained burns off all of his fat and then launches like one big heavy attack in like one on high octane blow and one hit and when Fat Gum does it, he's like, this is all because of Red Riot. I'll put all of his passion in one blow. hi And then, bam! Then they get defeated. So, uh, that was a very metal fight. And, and Tetsu Tetsu wasn't even present. But it was a very metal fight. Okay. I think we're gonna do a whole video. I think we're gonna do a video on Fat Gum and... Uh, as well as with the big three of UA. I gotta do one on them. We're getting close to the end of the student discussions. I mean, we still have class 1B, but there's. I'm not gonna do the same thing with them, like with the D20, because we still don't know half of their quirks or really what the full extent of them are. Um, but I think I'm gonna move on to, like, the teachers and other students after this, like, you know, Mirio and everything. I think that'll be a cool little thing to do there. Um, are we at the end? Crap, are we at the end already? Well, I, I talked about what he did in the series. Uh, talked about, I mean, there's the, there's the cultural fest, but the cultural fest arc, unless your name is gentle or Izuku, not really much to go off of there. Y you know what I mean? Cause it, not a lot of the other students did anything really to fight against gentle. It was really just Iz uh, Izuku there. Um, and then of course you had Kirishima who was part of the whole dance party and everything. So that, that was cool. But yeah, I, I, every time I get to the, uh, cultural fest arc i just gloss over it. it was like that's because only izuku was the one that fought the main villain everybody else just played instruments and danced and i i love a good dance number obviously but not really much room for analysis you, you know oh but i think um yeah i think i talked about pretty much everything personality yaoi shipping uh his quirk uh what he did in the series okay so um i'm actually going to place kirishima i i um I, somebody was really nice. They actually went in and gave me a full list of all of the uh, the students that I ranked in Class 1A. And uh, something that I did do, and this wasn't intentional, was I put Todoroki and Suyu in the same slot at number 4. And I was going to change that, but after looking at it more, I'm actually okay with that. I think I'm going to keep it the way I said it. You know, they're both number 4. I'm okay with that. So there'll just be one number that doesn't exist. Um, but I am going to put Kirishima at number seven. Okay, so as my favorite members of Class 1A, Kirishima ranks seven in my personal list there. He would have originally ranked pretty low, considering like at the beginning of the series. But everything we've seen from him up till this point, um, I think seven is pretty fair. All right, so here we are. <laughs> 
Uh, this will be the last D20 roll, man, because we only have two students left in Class 1A. We got Tenya Ida, student number four, and Izuku Midoriya, student number 18. And I really want Izuku to be the last student. Um, I know a, a lot of people were saying, Matt, just if you want Izuku to be last so much, then just do him last. He's It's your list. I'm like, guys, you don't understand. The D20 is... All right, I'll just come out with you, okay? When we started this, I made a pact with a dice demon. And those are the one type of demon you do not want to piss off. Anybody that's crossed paths with a dice demon, you know. All right? And I made a pact with this dice demon that I would let the D20s decide... And the consequence for not abiding by that rule or trying to cheat the system is that I will literally be trapped in a dice and I cannot be freed until it lands on the number 12. The dice has one trillion sides. I'm not messing this up, okay? So here we go. Where's the button? There's the button. Button, button. Where's got the button? All right. So we're looking for number four for Tenya Ida. Number 18 for Izuku Midoriya. Let's see if fate really is on my side. Roll it. Roll it, roll it, roll it. Oh, it's taking a little longer than usual. What do we got? 14, 6, and 6. Already did all those. 15, 16, 20. Already did all of those. 6, 12, 2. 10, 9, 19. 1, 4. Aha! Yes! Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Oh, oh, Dice Demon, are you happy? <laughs> I have pleased you. I shall now be holden in Dodecahalla for all eternity. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I love that. You have to, guys, guys, and... 100%. That's totally legit. 100%. I'm not... I didn't fudge it. I didn't do anything. I mean, that. this is it. This is pure unabated, okay? So, the next video in Class 1A discussion will be student number four, the class rep, Tenya Ida, um, which, of course, means that Izuku Midoriya... The main character of this entire series, Deku, good for nothing, will be dead last. And I love that. I love that. I, I've said it before, but I love that because I think it fits with his character. And also, he's the main character. So he's the kind I mean, his video is going to be really long. Ida's is going to be long as well, but his is going to be long. And um, I think it's a great way. I would have it no other way to finish out the series like that, you know? Ah, uh, we did a good job, ladies and gents. We did a good job. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. I don't know why I'm still here. Just kind of like, this is this has been a ride, you know? I love this. I love doing this series. When I started this series, I didn't think it was really going to take off too well. I'm like, oh. Because every now and then I tried doing My Hero Academia reviews, and they didn't really just, they didn't get a lot of hits and stuff. I'm just... I realize that reviewing it on a weekly basis is not really my sort of... It doesn't fit too well. But doing the character discussions, I've been having a lot of fun with these. Really have a chance for my creativity to shine and all that. Uh, speaking of which, what am I going to do for Ida's video? I don't know. I got to go out and maybe buy like a NASCAR jacket or something. You know, maybe get some... Like go to an auto parts store and get some mufflers in the background here. I don't know. If you have any ideas, let me know. Um... Uh, there is a Tenya Ida pop figure, but it's kind of rare. I'm actually bidding on one on eBay right now, so if I can win and get a decent price for it, we'll see. Uh, but yeah. Oh, and um, one little uh, announcement before I go is that um, the UA investigation contest that I did, uh, that ended on Saturday. I wanted to uh, thank you, uh, everybody that entered videos for that. Um, so I don't actually have a date set yet for the uh, winners. Um, I still have to watch quite a few of the videos. The thing is, I have a lot of projects coming up here at the end of October, like we're doing Horroween for One Piece, and I have a lot of One Piece stuff I have to get done. So I'm thinking about waiting until probably the first week of November to actually sit down and watch everything, and then at some point shortly after that, I'll have a video for announcing the winners. Um, I, I might get to it before that. I might, um, but 
I, I think for right now, because I'm going to be having him put out, like, I'm doing Halloween. That's going to be, like, six videos in six days. That's a lot of stuff. So, yeah. Um, I'm thinking about the first week of November after the whole Halloween thing is over. I can sit down and really judge that. So, um, thanks to everybody who participated, though. So I, there are some really funny ones I saw already. So, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So, um, go out and get... Does anybody, anybody want some hot tamales or red hots? I, um, I don't like hot candy. I got a lot of big red and... Big Red's okay. It's really kind of like, you know, a little bit too cinnamony for my taste. But you want some? Oh, you want some? All right, here you go. There you go. All right, cool. Have a great night, everybody. Rock on!